now, Brandon Thick Boy Shop. Well, hello, everybody. It's that time of the freaking month. UFC 300 is here. We've gotten terrible fight nights leading up to this. Just the worst of the worst. But who cares? As long as they're fighting, we'll watch it. But man, it was worth the wait because UFC 300 is here and I cannot wait. It is the most stacked card of all time. Don't get it twisted. It's not the best card of all time. It's the most stacked card. That's the difference. So if you take from the first fight of the night to the main event, the last fight of the night, historically, it's the most stack card we've ever seen because you have what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen four was that 14 fights was that four four eight and 13 five so you have 13 so it's the best 13 fights of a card we've ever seen from top to bottom but as far as the main it's not the best main card of all time it's the best overall card of all time does that make sense mm-hmm and wasn't hating on it. The problem was, and always is, and this is where it gets kind of murky in the waters here for the fight fans. Oh, you don't like UFC 300? That's card sick. No, no, no. My issue with 300, I was promised I'd get blown away, and I never got blown, if you remember. Mm -hmm. That was my issue. I was promised that this would be the best. You know what? To Danny's defense, he said best card of all time. It is the best card of all time. It's not the best main card of all time. Ah, touche, my rich friend. You got me. But, um, yeah, top to bottom, it's freaking insane. But, again, just uh, there's definitely been better main cards. That's all I'm saying. That's what you guys are paying for, you know, that pay-per-view, that main card. Um, but I cannot wait. I won't miss a single fight. Got to figure out if we know a fight campaign for it. 300, you kind of got to figure it out. 300, big deal. Big deal. Are we going to be alive for 400? I don't know. We're alive for 300, you know? You got to figure it out. Mm. Yeah, 300 is a big freaking deal, man. Big freaking deal. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. There's just so many stories with every single freaking, again, from the prelims to the ESPN prelims to the main card, there's just so many narratives, so many storylines. I just can't. I can barely take it. I can barely take it. The UFC's given us a real treat, just a real gem here. And they, you know, they, they've been messing with us because those fight nights were terrible. Apex Center fight nights, the, you know, the fight night that they had in um, Atlantic City, they, you know, they're bad. Let's just call it what it is. They were terrible. But they were just edging us to, to get to 300. And, man, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And that's going to be the talk of the town till Saturday, Saturday night. Although your boy Figueroa and Cody Garbrandt, Figueroa is probably going to walk out around 3 p.m. Figueroa, Cody Garbrandt is your initial start of the fight is wild. Now, hopefully Vegas, you know how Vegas does. They like to be cool and hip and get there just, you know, they get there probably by the second or third fight on the main card because they were out to dinner and doing their thing in vegas don't be a casual don't be an asshole you if you have a ticket to ufc 300 and if you don't show up for the very first fight at 3 p.m they should ban you from the rest of the ufc's for life you shouldn't be allowed to go to the ufc anymore this is the test are you a casual you're a casual if you you're a casual if you only show up for a Cater and Aljamain Sterling in the rest of the fights. You're missing Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison. You're missing Jalen Turner. You're missing Jessica Andrade, Bobby Green, Jim Miller. How da dare you? That's Jim fucking Miller, by the way. You're missing Figueroa, Cardi, Cody Garbrandt. Come on, man. You're, you're, you don't deserve to go to the UFC if you don't sit down, shut your freaking trap, and watch every fight starting from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. And you can't pee, you can't go to bathroom breaks, you can't get popcorn, there's no beer with your buddies, you're lasered focused, and you're rooting on these goddamn fighters. And if not, you get up, you leave, whatever, you take a call, you casual. You don't deserve a ticket, you're banned. That's what I would do if I was Dana White. That's what I would do. So we'll see, man. 
We'll see. Stacked freaking card. Stacked, stacked card. Um, there's a lot of ways we can attack this thing. We'll probably start off with the news that's taken over, even the 300 card. John Jones, back in the news. Now, the world we live in, people are quick to jump to conclusions. Not your boy, because I've been around the block with this stuff. And people want to attack people like John Jones or you know successful athletes. And John Jones is an easy one to assume what you read is true. Obviously, he has a... You know, a checkered past, and there's been a lot of issues, and, you know, it's been tough. It's been tough if you're a John Jones fan to defend him. And so uh, if you woke up, what, Sunday morning? Maybe Saturday? I forgot which day, but yeah. One or two Saturday. days ago, <laughs> you would see all over. I mean, legit news sources, NBC, ABC, ESPN, every MMA outlet possible, all of them. Oh, boy. John Jones in trouble. Uh, assaulted and threatened a testing agent that came to his house who's trying to collect a urine sample. Now, I think most people, are, oh, here's John again, because you're used to him having these mistakes and doing these knucklehead things. And I went, because you've really been around the block, I went, mm, I don't know. And then John Jones got kind of out in front of it and issued a statement. So it came out that it was four o'clock in the afternoon in Albuquerque. The whoever there, it's not USADA. The testing agents, it was a as a male, female, came to his house. He was taking a nap and they woke him up. Again, this is four PM. So whatever, four PM nap. Little little late in the day for me to be taking a nap, but to each its own. I don't know what he's doing out there. So they wake him up and they ask him to, you know, they, they're gonna randomly drug test him. And the female um drug tester agent said that he verbally threatened her and what else cussed at her and was aggressive and all this stuff and she went to the cops okay and so so as according to the report martinez claimed jones was initially cooperative with testing agents but became agitated which most would when he was unable to immediately provide a urine sample, probably didn't have to pee. Although when I wake up from a nap, I got to pee so hard. So that's a whole nother discussion. I got to pee so hard, like a super soaker. Uh, Martinez goes on to allege that Jones appeared intoxicated, even though he's napping, and told the agents, why you fucking people come so early? Remember, it's 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, do you know what happens to people who come to my house? They end up dead. Not great. She also uh, alleges John Jones threatened to sue them. Can't. What, what were you going to tell the cops there? Uh, the officer handled the report and noted he reviewed the video on Martinez's phone in which Jones appeared to state, here is fucking, Jer this is kind of funny, here's Jerome and his girlfriend in my garage, and then cut, and the phone cut off. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely think they got there. John was a little prickly, and Price said some unprofessional stuff. I think they were unprofessional. Then John posted a video as they're leaving of him hugging and high-fiving them. So if her life was really threatened, I don't know if you're hugging and high-fiving. And she went for the high-five. Mm -hmm. John didn't. So right away, I smell bullshit here. I smell bullshit. I bet you the UFC, A, we'll see how long she has her job, right? Or we'll see how she might keep her job, but she's sure probably not going to be working with UFC fighters. You just can't, you can't have it. You can't have it. You woke up a fighter, he was upset, said some off-colored things, whatever, and then you went to the cops, especially John Jones, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, of course, everyone's like, oh God, here goes John again. Not me, I'm like, oh, this, I smell bullshit here. Because how easy it for this DFSI agent, for sure, change the name, but the DFSI agent to go to the cops and the cops are like, oh God, here we go again. You know, he's too easy of a target. He could have been nicer, 100%. Did he break the law? Absolutely not. You know, you also yeah. randomly come in to a guy's house who's taking a nap, asking him to take a piss. Yeah, they're not going to be exactly the most friendly person in the world. And he's buzzed from a party that he had with his friend's birthday thing, whatever. Yeah, he's so cussing he's like, and whatever. He's like, what the fuck? You know, he's probably pissed. <clears throat> you know, so it's just all bull. It's all shame. You know, you just don't need it. Now, we, you know, wasn't when John had the incident with his wife, wasn't he saying he's done drinking? And then, you know, 
there's been things that pop up like when he went to that stand up comedy show in Albuquerque. He's yeah. like heckling the stand up, but just, very nicely though. Yeah, but he's he hammered. He's you know, I thought hammered. it was like, hey, I thought you weren't drinking yeah. anymore, but whatever. And then this clearly drinking. You know, he says he was having a friend's party at his house, mm -hmm. which teach its own. You know, he's a grown ass man. Doesn't have a fight coming up. It's more worrisome. You know, you see him drunk in public, heckling the the comedian. Yeah, often and stuff. drunk. Yeah, so. Uh, I just think he's too easy of a target. Too easy of a target. I guarantee you this. He's like, come on, man. You know, not, not with John, with with the with the agents and that that organization that they hired to do these drug testing. Like that it probably ain't the move. You know, and she's a liability, crazy liability. Yeah, there's no like harm or something. Just I don't know. That's weird. And also, by the way, he threatened to sue us. The Catholic. What do you want us to do with that? Yeah. Uh, there were also false reports of him being actually arrested and taken into custody, but that's not true. I'm telling you, man, be, was, care, be careful when you jump to conclusion on this stuff. You know and what I'm saying? I think it was NBC News or something like something NBC, like legit, ABC, yeah. ESPN, major MMA outlets. You know, it's not good. It's not good. But he was officially charged, at least for assault. And then uh, obviously in court, they're going to find out what actually happened. And this is Jones's statement on it. Um, it's too long, but basically he said that, yeah, he's, he was never really actually arrested. It's just a misinformation. In fact, I'm currently in Texas with my daughter at a volleyball tournament. Uh, I understand that may be easy target given some of my past issues. That's what's going on mm -hmm. here. Uh, I was recently visited by a tester, celebrating a birthday, taking a nap. I mean, who naps during the middle of a party, though? When you drink a lot, man. Especially when it's your house. <laughs> All right, you guys have fun. <laughs> uh, it's trouble. Um the tester, so on, so he's saying they're unprofessional in the protocol by one tester, which caused frustration, leading me to use some profanity, whatever. Which he admits, yeah. yeah. Who cares? Okay. I regret, however, I want to emphasize that at no point did I threaten or get in anyone's face, raise my voice, or engage in any form of assault. If he assaulted her, trust me, she's not walking out giving him a high, high five. five. Yeah. It's unfortunate that false news has been spread without proper fact checking. That's the world today, John. I want to assure you that I will defend myself against these accusations. Truth is, is the incident simply did not occur. We got to get rid of her. You got to fire her. I mean, the footage is on his side for sure. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm assuming his camera's inside too, right? I would assume. Hmm. Yeah, it's all just garbage, just clickbait. From the UFC, I, I, I probably distanced myself from that agency. You just don't need it. Or that agent in particular. Because the other dude didn't do anything. She's the one that filed the report. Uh, why didn't the other dude speak up? You were there, he man. Had no problem. I you guess. saw it? What happened? Did you see John Fisco assault her? Like, he's the key witness here. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. So, when they go to trial. Have we heard anything from him? I haven't heard anything. The problem is, are they friends? What's going on here? You know? So, if they both, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure together. he doesn't want to get, in, like, if it never happened, he's going to be like, I'm torn now. She's my buddy. I can't like. But also, how stupid her. is it where, I and mean, if John Jones assaulted you, there would be a nine one one call. I mean, I mean, John it's a, Jones. It's like a verbal. That's it's considered assault when you threaten people, which is yeah. Who knows actually what happened? But it, hopefully, he also there woke cameras. a drunk dude up from a nap, <laughs> like a bear from hibernation. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's a. It's all just crap. You know, it's just one more thing John has to deal with. Yeah, get rid of those that testing agency. Just all of them, just burn them to the ground. Also, just quit testing them. It's kind of funny, like they're popping up more and more in the news. After ever since like Usada left, they're in, in the Walt Harris. There's like two other you know athletes that got tested and popped like recently. Yeah, it's all not good. Then your boy Mar uh, Morgan Whalen, Morgan Wallen, yeah, not good. Threw a chair over a balcony at yeah. a bar. Another guy that probably needs to lay low on the alcohol. To throw a chair at your success level, it's kind of like, what are you doing, dude? But yeah. I mean, who knows what happened? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I love, I love him, so. Yeah, I yeah. love him too. I, you know, but just cut, tighten up, dude. Yeah. Like, don't throw chairs when you're that famous. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> at man? a bar where there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, yeah, just, and you're, you know, I don't know. All right, kids, let's take a little break here from all the chit chat about UFC 300 because my friends at DraftKings, good God almighty, in Las Vegas, it is going down. UFC 300 is so good. And if you want to 
watch the grand old fight this weekend and make bank nothing makes the fights better more stressful than when you have money on the line and that's why our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook the official sports betting partner of the UFC is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any UFC 300 bet. And boy, is there a lot to bet on from the freaking crack of the early prelims. You're talking about Figueredo, Cody Garbrandt, Bobby Green, Jim Miller, Jalen Turner. My God, those are the prelims. Then on the ESPN prelims, you got Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison, Cater, Aljamain Sterling, Rackett. Good God. And then we get to the main card. And there are some dogs on this card, which I think would be fun to bet on. I like Max Holloway as a dog, which I will get into. Uh, Armin Sarukin is a favorite. You got Charles Oliveira as a dog. Alex Piera, barely, that's almost a pick him versus Jamal Hill. Bo Nickel, of course, is the biggest favorite on the card. But there's a lot of ways you can make some bank with DraftKings for the biggest UFC card ever. We're talking UFC 300. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code SHOB SHOW. That's S-C-H-A-U-B SHOW. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code SHOB SHOW. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-78-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario, bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance, see dkng.com slash MMA for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right, let's get into it. All right, so that was probably the biggest news, but the other one was Dana White actually uh, posted something on his Instagram story, or, yeah, Instagram story with Conor McGregor saying coming soon. Yeah, just like, you know, Connor said, when he came up with International Fight Week, that wasn't just him hoping it happens. Mm -hmm. Like, he knows the deal. Also, UFC 300 was never get, was never in the cards for him because he was busy promoting Roadhouse. Like, that, that taxing schedule of the promotion tour for a movie, you can't get ready for a fight. Dana knew that. Connor knew that. So that's why I said International Fight Week. Also, if you remember... After UFC, I think this is right. After UFC 200, Conor didn't fight at 200. He fought at 205 against Nate Diaz, which is one of the biggest fights of all time. So the UFC is not going to burn a Conor McGregor fight on a UFC 300 because UFC 300 can stand on its own and Conor sure as hell can stand on its own. So you don't need to burn both, yep. you know, at one fight. So that's what they're doing. Yeah, so I'm I'm sure we'll get a fight, like official fight announcement on June 20. You know, before, that he's fighting June 20. I heard that the against Chandler, a, like a fighters saying that there's going to be something huge announced at UFC 300, which makes sense. So I'm imagining they'll announce this fight at 300. Yeah, I guess that's huge. At this, it's like yeah, that's what's happening. Like this is, I guess that that video's Dana leaking it out a little bit. It's a simple post, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's fight international fight week. Ba 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 ba. You know he's been saying this for a hot second. Have you heard about Ronda Rousey in the news about an interview? She, an interview she had with a YouTuber. Um, so she was talking about like multiple concussions that she ha she's had before. That's Which why is she true. Was like, yeah. yeah, from judo. She yeah, mm -hmm. she took it. Yeah, and then she had to like hide it because obviously if you say anything about it publicly, you're not going to be able to fight. Correct. But for this particular interview, uh, let me just play it for you, and we don't have to put it on air, case. I'll just okay. put the audio. Uh, here we go. And uh, people making all these judgments about me in a fight where I was literally She's talking about my first loss. I was not like my mouth guard was bad. I literally came into that fight concussed from slipping down some stairs already after our, all of these years of, uh, you know, um, concussions. And then I had absolutely terrible weight cut, which, you know, you have, that means you have less fluid in your brain to concut to protect it. And, um, and I was out on my feet. For the entire fight, I was just trying to make it look like I wasn't hurt. Like, but I wasn't there cognitively. I couldn't make. I couldn't think as fast. I couldn't judge distance. And and just from that one fight, everybody felt like, oh, she's a, she's a fraud. And mm -hmm. I know that like, I'm the greatest fighter that is that has ever lived. But 
when it got to a point where I'd just taken so much neurological damage that I couldn't take it anymore. So That's a lot of people are giving her, you know, flack for saying that she's considering herself the greatest fighter that has ever lived. Did, did it skip? Did she say fee Was there a female fighter in there? Or just she just said fighter in general. Fighter. Did, was there a fighter. lag in the thing <laughs> where she just said female fighter? No. 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 Um, yeesh, it's tough. Um, I I, th I think the issue I have the, let, now I'll say this: most of the fighters at that level that have be that were champions, former champions, had some sort of reign. Most of them, whether they're right or not, with their egos, assume they're the best fighter of all time, and they're telling that to their friends, family, anyone who's going to listen to them. Most of them at that level. Whether it's, again, true or not, think they were the greatest fighter of all time. All right, that's fine. Um, the issue I have, and I watched the whole interview, the issue I have with the interview is we haven't heard from her in how long? Like, she doesn't do a ton of interviews. And she's clearly still hurt, by the way. Everything's gone and her career ended. But to not have any hindsight and not be able to have any reflection and not give credit to Holly Holm or Amanda Nunes is the issue. And... I just think it's weird because I'm sure she has a PR person or a manager. I think if they discuss this beforehand and if they agreed, yeah, man, tell them about the concussions before, tell them about your mouthpiece, give them a bunch of excuses on why Holly beat you, that's going to go over great. Then she needs to fire everybody on her team. Whoever thought this was a good idea for her to be silent for so long and she's the unicorn we never really hear from. She's great, smart. Ron is smart as hell. So she should know how this was going to go over call herself the greatest fighter of all time of course you can get blowback on that you know ronnie gets a lot of hate no matter what but that doesn't bother me most people that have those accolades and have carried the torch and been the face of the ufc hate to tell you this is just how it goes in order to get to that level that's you have to think you're the greatest of all time that's fine is it true no she's the greatest female fighter of all time there's a debate there for sure is she the hoist Gracie of female fighting? Yes. She's fa she was fantastic. Is it easy to pick her career, you know, f moments and go, well, the competition wasn't as good and but it does you have no idea what you're talking about. She was fighting the people that were in front of her and she beat the hell out of them. She did it very convincingly and also put women's MMA on the map. Mm -hmm. Now people go, "No, Gina Carano or Cyborg, they had nowhere near as much exposure or pressure as Ronda did." She was the face of the biggest organization in the world, and she passed the test in flying colors and beat girls in flying colors. I mean, insane. She put women's MMA on the map. Were the people before her? Yes. But she was the one. She is the GOAT when it comes to that. But it's easy to sit back and pick her career out and say this and that. She still, hands down, might be the greatest female fighter of all time as far as she moved the ball forward for everyone. You know? So... I don't have a problem with that. The, the problem is not just that, you know, as you get older, you should have some self-awareness and reflection and know that making excuses is not the way to go. That's the issue. And I don't know if that's her take, if that's the PR take, if somebody told her her manager's take, that was an awful take, awful take. To, and why can't you just give Holly your, the, the flowers she deserves? Give Amanda Nunes the flowers she deserves, especially Holly, especially Holly. Never been knocked out before, you know, and say, oh, I slipped, mouthpiece issue, prior concussions. You know, it's like, no, no, we're not trying to hear that. Any of that, man. You know, so yeah. she should have just gave Holly her flowers and moved on. You know, it would have went a lot further. But yeah, this did not go over well. Did not go over well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to help sell books. If she would have had some reflection, like, yeah, you know, there, there were some holes in my striking game. And if I, you know, I finally met Holly, who's an insane striker, one of the best of all time. And, you know, it catch, caught up to me. But I had a great career. You know, shout out to Holly. You know, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest to ever do it. And, you know, I just, I, I probably should have focused on a little more defense there. And, you know, I just did it. And it ended up catching me. But I'm proud of my career. Something like that. And then probably should have never fought the Amanda Nunes fight. You know, after that Holly won, you know, I had some glaring holes in my game and you know i just didn't have enough time and then you know i got starch man but those last two fights were tough but it doesn't take away what i did and i was a pioneer and a trailblazer and 
you know, I'm glad I could be a role model for all the women out there. That's the way to handle it. You should have been on our team to do that then, because those are all great <laughs> yeah. points to make. Yeah, to make her look especially when you've been out of the spotlight, mm -hmm. you know. And then she remember she went to the WWE and she was like a heel there, I think. I think. And I she was know. like doing her thing. And she left there, and I think it was not on great terms. She's kind of talked some stuff about WWE. It's Concussion like stuff too. just be cool, man. You know that to not have any self reflection over the years now. It's just it's just not a good look. And she's a smart ass girl, one of the greatest to ever do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should not be taken away from her. But stuff like this is not helping your case. So that was a bummer to see. She should fire PR team, manager, whoever decided to do this. Let's take a little break, kids, and we'll get right back to the program because this episode of the Shop Show UFC 300 is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, oh, O'Reilly. We're in the business of keeping your car on the road. You need a reliable car. And O'Reilly Auto Parts offers friendly, helpful service and parts knowledge you'll need for all your maintenance and repairs. Whatever you got going on with your ride, O'Reilly got you covered. They got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. So you never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got it all. I've said this many of times. I have a 20 year old Ford Lightning. They even had the parts for that freaking thing. And if they didn't, it came the next day. I was able to pick it up. It's so freaking easy. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free, in or out of your car. It doesn't matter. If you need it to be replaced, they'll help you find just the right battery so your vehicle is up and running, so you're not missing work, you're dropping the kids off at school. No problemo. Whatever you need, they got you covered. Whether you're a car expert or a rookie, They'll f you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are super helpful. Best of all, friendly, super friendly. They're going to help you out with whatever you need. Professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. You can find what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Visit them at O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. All righty. Um, just as a quick one. So Chael Sonnen responded to it saying like. But also real quick. Mm-hmm. I think also, and it, it, it's just the MMA space now, is she did an interview with, I don't know who that girl is, but has- Some YouTuber. Sure. Has no background in MMA. So let's say she did it with like Luke Thomas or Ariel. Mm -hmm. When she said that, if you have a person who's knowledge, knowledgeable on the sport, they could have went, well, what about this? Well, don't you think this? And if you could at least stare Rhonda, because she was going down a weird path, right? Greatest of all time, slipped, you know, didn't eat right, didn't sleep, that whatever, all these excuses. If there's someone who's knowledgeable on on the history of her career and MMA, they would like, yeah, but hold on. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be like, but what Holly went on to do this and Amanda, how about Amanda, greatest of all time, double double division champion? And she's like, No, I know they're good. I shouldn't I think so if someone could have checked her to stop from going down that hill with no brakes, it, this interview could have went a lot better. That's the problem. When you do these interviews and these people have no context of who Rhonda is and what her career is and how great she was and you know the fights that she had and what she represents, this is what happens. Because that girl has no fucking, she doesn't know UFC 300s this weekend. And she's like, right, right. Yeah, you slipped. That's terrible. You know, oh my God, you know? So that, that's the problem. And we see this in MMA now. Because the UFC's done a good job kicking out the real journalists, the real hardcores. And they bring in these, you know, powder puff interviews. You're the greatest of all time, no doubt. It doesn't, but the rest of the world's like, what the fuck? Why don't you ask her this? That's the problem with this stuff. And this is one of the negative side effects. What what jails say about it? Um, he, he was sort of defending her in a way. He's saying like, if she is really dealing with neurological issues, those concussions, all that stuff is like, you know, it's, it's affecting her to this day. Then you, you shouldn't take those statements, you know, like word for word. She's probably not like all there. Meaning this what? is me just kind of like some, what's Dude, up? he's saying like, she's what she's saying, she's still out of it. So her saying she's a grace of all time. Kind of implying something like nah, that. I disagree with him. I think literally to get, Chael will say he's the grace of all time. <laughs> yeah. Chael will say he's the greatest to ever do it. Yep. With, <laughs> it's not, he was never champion. You know, like, I love Chael. That, that's my fucking guy. He will say he's the greatest of all time. Kobe Covington will say he's the greatest of all time. Ian Gary says he's the greatest of all time. Any guy that or gal that's worth their fucking worth 
is going to tell you they're the greatest of all time. That's not CTE. That's just having confidence in the ego thing in cage fighting. In order to get to the level of the UFC, hate to tell you guys, it's going to break your heart. Everyone, even before they get to the UFC, thinks they're the greatest of all time. Ronda actually has some accolades and belts Tons, that yeah. can kind of give her some credit to say I'm the greatest of all time. Everyone thinks this. Anderson Silva thinks he's the greatest of all time. Khabib thinks he's the greatest of all time. All Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin, all these people think they're the greatest of all time. Ronda just, she has no filter. She'll say it, but she truly believes that. That's not CT. And she also has a case for it, but you don't say it. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know how like LeBron, when he tells you the greatest of all time, it's kind of cr cringy. You're like, oh man, you know, you're like, oh, come on. If you're the greatest of all time, you don't have to say it. You, the people will tell you. Jordan doesn't come out really. It, it, ju you, you ever see Jordan really doing that? You know, LeBron has to be like, hey, remember, I'm the greatest of all time. Like, yeah, okay, dude. Yeah. People tell him Jordan is. You don't hear Jordan going on podcasts and interviews going, I'm the greatest of all time. No. The fans decide that. But I think I think Chael's a little off there. I don't think it's like a CT or a neurological thing, you know. I just I, I just wish he had someone around her to go, no, no, don't do that. Even if you feel like that, which is fine, it helps you, you know, deal with the losses, which is fine. If that helps you deal with it, all good. But at some point you, you just need to acknowledge Holly's a really fucking good fighter. When it comes to striking, as good as you are on the ground. She's that good on the feet, and she kicked you in the fucking face. That's how. That's what happened. You have to accept that, and you got to give her flowers and move on. That's it. You just didn't have the tools to compete on the feet with Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes. Now, if it went to the ground, you could beat them, but you made some critical errors. And if you accept that, it would have went so much further. You would have sold so many books. So many people can relate to that. People can't relate when you when you make excuses. People go, ah oh, man, that lets a lot of people down. A lot of people down. You just got to own it. She needs to read Jocko's book on accountability. Good. You got kicked in the face. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so speaking of another interview that doesn't know MMA that much, uh, Joe Rogan kind of went to Sage Steele's defense. Remember how she, Sage Steele interviewed? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say Joe. <laughs> Uh, Dana White and called him or you know insinuate that he was Joe Rogan but Joe Rogan was cool about it saying like well first of all if you talk that much on interviews sometimes you kind of do flubs you know it's going to happen every now and then he says a lot of people mis mistaken him for uh, Dana White anyways so Dana said uh, or uh, just Rogan Rogan said I've been called Dana before some dude goes yo Dana I'm like no I'm the other dude I'm Joe <laughs> happens all the time if he just made a mental flub when you're doing a podcast and you're interviewing someone, especially if you haven't done a lot of them, it's like a high profile thing. You're doing Dana White. You're always thinking of what to say, even the question, what's your dream? That's a crazy question. That's like, I don't know what to ask you. So I'm just going to ask what you agree. <laughs> I agree with him. That's such, yeah. That was such like an, and she, I know. <laughs> she's such a professional. Like when it comes to interviewing, obviously podcast is different. It's a different mm -hmm. medium, but she's interviewed big bull. I mean, the biggest in sports and for her to a mess up his name is, is just insane at her level. And then B, to kick off the interview with, what's your dream? Yeah, it's like. I think she said Dana White plenty of times, but then just at one point, she's, or two points, I think. She, she was just, I think what happened twice, she said she implied that he was Dana White. I'm oh, sorry, uh, Joe Rogan. And she's a professional. See, even yeah. you messed it up, man. I know, that's what I'm saying. It just happens. At her level, though, it's wild. I mean, <laughs> if, I, I, I think if what's interviewing Dana I think, White right I think in front of more you. wild, it, A, her messing it up is insane at her level. Because, she, again, she's, like, legit, man, right? ESPN, big boy stuff. And then to kick off an interview of a person you've never met, what's your dream? It's so insanely she's lost. amateur. <laughs> she just panicked. What's Dana White's... What? Joe Rogan? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I agree. She handled it the right way. She kept it in there. She didn't edit it out. Yeah, that it's was funny. cool, Joe Rogan, to say that, too. Like yeah. She could have easily taken it out, but she's like, nah, I messed up. Um, yeah. Yeah, even Matt Sarah said people fuck up and say, can I have a pick? And they go, thanks a lot, Mr. White, or thanks, Joe Rogan. <laughs> like, no, nah, I mean, just bald guys, you know? Yeah. Maybe people are drunk. Those podcasts are awesome, by the way. When Matt Sarah's on, Rogan's yeah, podcast, Dean Thomas, and yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so over the weekend, something cool happened with one championship. Uh, the main thing I want to show you was the Rotola brothers. Oh, my boys. Yeah. They both did the same submission. I don't know if you've ever seen the submission, but I'll see if I can play the video for it. It's a variation of the rear naked choke. Yeah, but it's like under an arm. So this is Cade. Looks like a head arm choke. Oh, wow. That's dope. They call it a Rutolo team. That was Cade. And then if you check this out, this is Ty. Man, what's the chances of the twins pulling off the... I mean, they're the same person, though, right? As he gets the 27th win of his career, and here is how it ended. Straight on the back of Isaac Michel. The choke is in. He went about a little bit. It's a variation of a head arm choke. The body triangle, the tap is there. You guys probably used to see it when the guy's on top doing it. You know what I'm saying? When, the, when it's like this. Uh -huh. Remember when they get the head arm on side control and they come over and put a lot of pressure? But so they're on, on the back. Your head, head, or you like this? Yeah, so this, the, so when, when they're pinching this, it's cutting off the air here. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's a head arm choke. Okay. Just from the back. Rotolo well, team. They're called the Rotolo team. They both did it. That's insane. Yeah. Shout out to them boys. And then check out this dude. He's a heavyweight for one, undefeated. I think he only has a couple fights though, but. Uh, this is my boy. You know him? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know him, but he fights out of my old team. Cody Garbrandt's his head, uh, I'm sorry, Jesus. Cody Donovan's his head coach. Cody said he's so insanely talented. The UFC offered him a fight too. The UFC offered him a contract to decide to go with one. Yeah, apparently this dude's undercover. Look at his jean shorts. That is legendary. He's actually a character, so I'll show you his, like, his interview Super here. Super character. So Ben Tynan is his name. Yeah, I feel freaking fantastic. The only issue is we got a middleweight holding the belt at heavyweight, and that ain't cool. I'm calling out Anatoly. I'm coming for you, man. It may not be next, but I'm coming, brother. So keep your eye out, baby. And he's a middleweight. There's not a middleweight on this planet that could beat me. I will whoop his. His jean shorts on. <laughs> well, like jean shorts. He's a look. funny character. He's classic, man. Now, apparently, from what I hear from the the training room, this kid is unreal. Like world champion. And level. his nickname, Vanilla, Vanilla Thunder. Thunder. God, I can't get enough of this guy. <laughs> Elevation fight team. Vanilla, and then the, the Vanilla Thunder. Canadian. You know what? Now I see that he can't look at any more Canadian. I kind of see what you're saying. He yeah. reminds me like Olivier Aubin Aussie kind of that yeah. look. Stud. So did you know there's this guy named Jake Peacock at one and he just won his last fight and he has one well he has like basically like Nick Newell, but mm -hmm. I think even less of an arm. So he has he's basically missing his entire forearm area. But uh check him out. Oh, damn. Anyway, very talented He's a fighter. monster, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure, rotate to the Jake left. Peacock. Though, right? <laughs> what? Just keep the footwork to the left. You're going to mix it up, though, no? I don't know. I would just stay on the left and avoid the, <laughs> the left hand there. All right. But God dang, fighting stuff enough, doing it with one arm. What a savage, dude. Yeah. Talented cat. Let's take a little break because this episode of the Shab Show for UFC 300 is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Let's face it, insurance can be pretty overwhelming. It's a lot to choose from, and you don't know what to do a lot of the time. You're just going to go with what's easy. Well, guess what's easy? Progressive Insurance. They do the hard work of comparing rates so you can find a great rate that works just for you. Even if it's not with them, they're still going to give you the best options possible so you make the smart choice that works for your budget. They give their nifty comparison tool a try. 
Go ahead and give it a try, all right? And you might just find getting the rate and coverage you deserve is easy. All you need to do is visit Progressive Progressive's website to get a quote with all the coverages you want, like comprehensive and collision coverage or personal injury protection. Then you'll see Progressive Direct Rate. Their tool will help will provide options from other companies all lined up and ready to compare. So it's simple to choose the rate and coverages you like. Press play on comparing auto rates. Quote at progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states and situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Progressive Insurance. You're welcome. We're also brought to you by Caged Elite Supplement Brand. There's a lot of supplements out there, and it's all smoke and mirrors. That's why I partnered up with Caged. I wish I had this stuff when I was competing. I use it when your boy's on the racetrack, the mindset, the electrolytes. They got it all, and I know I'm safe. If you're a competitor, whether it's UFC, NBA, NFL, whatever you're doing, this stuff is third-party tested for banned substances by NSF, Informed Sports Certified. That's what separates Cage from the rest of the knucklehead brands out there. It's all clean formulas. They use the best of the best ingredients. No freaking fillers. No none of that nonsense. No colors or flavors from artificial sources. They have patented key ingredients. They never use generic alternatives. Their pure organic caffeine is fantastic compared to synthetic caffeine that you get with a lot of pre-workouts. All right. Again, I love their pre-workout, their pre-workout elite. The energy is intense in a good way. The pumps, it's fantastic. Hydration elite, they got you covered. Uh, there's a lot of hydration stuff out there where they say, just add it to the water. Again, it's it's nothing compared to Cage. The protein tastes fantastic. It's protein, but it's the best of the best protein. And then the mindset, the nootropic mindset, try it out. Tell me if you've ever felt anything like their mindset. It's the mindset elite because I like the caffeine with it. I use it before every single podcast before I work out. I can't get enough of this stuff. I go through a ton of it. All right. They're there for you. So if you're ready to train harder, live healthier, and become the strongest version of yourself, and why not, kids? Let's do this. Go to cage.com. Use the code SHOB for 20% off. That's SHOB, S-C-H-A-U-B. You get 20% off. Go to K-A-G-E-D.com, promo code SHOB for 20% off. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Cage.com, promo code SHOB, 20% off. Let's get back to the freaking program. How do you like this fight? Andre Touchy Feely versus Cub Swanson. That's a fun fight. I thought that's that a fun a fight. Matchup, yeah. Feely used to look up to Cub big mm. time. They seem like the same kind of personalities, too. That's a fun fight. Yeah. UFC 303. 303. And let's see here. Michael Chandler. Someone asked him how he's going to beat Conor McGregor, and he just said second round KO, which. I thought was pretty cool. And there's another one with Justin Gaethje, how he's predicting how he's going to beat Max Holloway, which is kind of like What's he crazy. Say? I'll finish Max. He might not go to sleep the traditional way, but I think uh, inflict enough damage where the doctors need to stop it. Um, so what are your thoughts yeah, on this Yeah, let's get into one? UFC 300. Yeah. So that's that's why you're all here. Um, <laughs> you know, when when the my initial reaction when the it was announced that for the BMF title, Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. I went, why would they do that? It holds up the divisions. J Gaethje could have fought for a title. Now, you know, this kind of just a filler fight. The UFC panicked just to make this fight to get some big names because they didn't know what to do really here. Um, and I, I, I didn't like the fight. And I was like, you know, Justin Gaethje can hurt Max Holloway. Then the more I sit back and think, and I thought, you know what? This might be the best fight of the guard. This is a fantastic fight. Um, and I, I think we're doing an injustice to Max Holloway if you assume he's going to go in there and just trade with Justin Gaethje. I think Max Holloway can come up with a game plan to avoid, you know, kind of this slugfest that Justin Gaethje does. Obviously, Justin Gaethje, you know, Justin Gaethje, and, you know, he's going to try and take his head off and, you know, he comes with those explosive leg kicks. But remember, Max Holloway, again, people would say, oh, well, Max Holloway, you know, his issue with leg kicks, and he beat Jose Aldo. So chill on that. Um, and he had close fights with uh, Volkanovski, who's also a pretty damn good leg kicker. But I, I do think Max can win this fight. I don't think he is capable of knocking Justin out. I think Max Holloway 
if he comes with a great game plan, which I'm sure I'm not saying anything he's not aware of, obviously staying in the out fight, a lot of movement, ton of movement. And um, I think I will take Max as the underdog that gets it done via decision. I think Max stays on his bike, peppers him with the jab, doesn't engage in these huge combos with Justin where he's going to get clipped. I think he's learned from his fight at 55 with Dustin Poirier, and I don't think he plays that game. I think he learned from that with Dustin Poirier, and uh, and he fights smart and calculates, stays on the outside. He has the skill to do it, and I do think he's an overall better uh, boxer than Justin Gaethje. I think it shows in this fight, and I don't think it's crazy exciting, but I think Max Holloway wins via decision. I think he can pull it off at UFC 300, and then he will fight your boy Topiria. I think that's what happens. And I think for, for the lightweight division, if Justin were to lose this, obviously not getting a title shot after losing to Max Holloway. So uh, Dustin Poirier is going to fight um, Makachev. That's what happens. Poirier or Gaethje? Poirier. Oh, okay. Because Gaethje would lose to Max Holloway, right? Got you, got you. My bad. Um. But it's, it, I think it's, I mean, again, there's, it's hard just to circle one fight on this card. The most intriguing fight is Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. Because Max Holloway makes one mistake or, you know, has one mental glitch, he's going to get absolutely KO'd. So there's a lot on the line for Max Holloway there. And he knows this. He's going to be on his bike, get it done. Uh, the most competitive fight on the card is Ole, uh, Charles Oliveira and Armin Sarukin. That's a fantastic fight. Changing of the guards there. You got the old head in Charles Oliveira, one of the best to ever do it. Armin Sarukin, obviously on a freaking tear. The, he, uh, he's not even 30 yet. Was he mid-20s? He is a straight savage. 27. 27. Getting better, too. Getting better. First fight ever in the UFC was against Makachev. Wild. Yeah. I'd love to see Sarukin and Makachev rematch. Great fight. Both have gotten a lot better. Who knows what happens, but that's a great fight. Um, that Sarukin, Charles Oliveira, probably the most competitive fight. Bummer with this is, you know, when you do stack cards like this, one of the issues is they, and I wish they would bend the rules a little bit, especially on the main card. You could even argue on the prelims, but, you know, it'd just be such a long night, but you got to be such a super fan for this. But I think from the second fight on the main card to the last fight, they should all be five rounds. At second that level, rounds. like Charles Oliveira, Armin Sarukin, three rounds, bullshit. That should be a five-round fight. To find out who's the best, we need five rounds. Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage, that's not going to be five rounds. They could probably just be one round. We're good with that. Yuri and Rackett, that could be five rounds. Calvin Cater, Aljamain Sterling, that should be five rounds. Holly Holm, Kyla Harrison, five rounds. Yeah, plus it's UFC 300, so they could have done something It's just like such that. a long <laughs> night if you do that. Yeah, it's they'd a have huge to start event. Now. They'd, <laughs> yeah, they'd have to start fighting. Yeah, they'd have to start fighting that on is true. Wednesday that is afternoon. True. <laughs> or 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 do uh, two main cards. Do it like the WWE WrestleMania. Do a main card on Friday night or Saturday night and one on Sunday night. But there's like like from uh, Yusuf, which is a great fight. From Yusuf to Yuri which is four fights on the prelims on ESPN, those should be five rounds. From, the, from uh, Charles Oliveira to the main event with Alex Pierre and Jamal Hill, five rounds. Because Charles Oliveira, Armin Sarukin, is a main event anywhere else. For it to be three rounds is injustice. It's not good. It's not ideal. Not ideal at all. Not ideal at all. For year in racket, I, I, I could use two more rounds on that. Cater Aljo, I could use two rounds on that. Holly, Kayla Harrison. Now, Kayla Harrison, the kind of elephant in the room going into that is how is the, is she going to make weight? Guarantee it. She's a professional. How it affects her, because in judo, she competed at, I want to say, 180 or 170? 170. She competed at 170. Now she's finding that bantam weight. It's such a big cut. It's a massive cut, and she's never made it. You know, she's never made, gotten this low. So, um, will she make the weight? Absolutely. 
How she performs, we'll see. So for her, it's, it's a good thing it's three rounds. Because when you're cutting weight like that and you got those two extra rounds, tough. Tough. Oh, and I heard Anik say, um, Bruce Buffer, because it's on ESPN, the early prelims are on ESPN, that ESPN nixed um, Bruce Buffer saying Jim fucking Miller. They can't do it. They did it? Yeah. Oh. So Bruce would have done it? Oh, yeah. Bruce wanted to do it. They can't. Oh, that's lame. Because it, it's on ESPN. I mean, they could still like mute. They that. could beep it out. Right? Yeah. Just like fuck like yeah, that. I know. But ESPN said absolutely not. That sucks. I know. Not a huge thing, but it still sucks. It'd be cool. Come yeah. on, man. Let me do the thing. The crowd would go crazy, too. Wild. Yeah. What fight are you guys looking more forward to? There's so many to choose from. Damn. I mean, the main for sure for me. The main's interesting because, again, there's some questions here because in the main event, if it was Jamal Hill, say, later in the year, not, was it, I think he's right out of year from the Achilles tear and the surgery. So that's pretty fast, man. So I don't know what version of Jamal Hill we're getting, and we know that this wasn't the main event the UFC wanted. This was like six on the list. So they have to make it happen, and I'm sure Jamal Hill got paid bank. Now, did they rush him? How's his Achilles doing? Remember, too, that Achilles, Jamal Hill's not a guy uh, like a wonder boy who's on his feet bouncing around side to side. A lot of his power is coming from the, the heel, the turn of the heel, and he's known for that big right hand, right? So... If that's compromised and you put all that torque on your on your Achilles heel that had you know the, is recovering from surgery, who knows how that goes? Also, Alex Pierre is pretty fancy of the calf kicks. How's he going to react to the calf kicks? If there was no Achilles heel issue and no questions about that injury, I'm so much more excited for this fight. Jamal Hill is such a damn good boxer. Alex Pierre, to be fair, doesn't really move his head. He, de he doesn't come from a boxing background, so it's different, you know, with that kickboxing Muay Thai style. Those guys' heads don't really move. And for a guy like Jamal Hill, that is money. For a guy that doesn't move his head, you're going to get punched in the fucking face. Also, with the kicks, you know, he, Alex is going to throw a lot of kicks. Jamal Hill can counter those. His hands are so fast. His, his hands are special. You know, that's what makes him an outlier. Jamal Hill's one-two. His hook's good. That's where he's special. That when Alex opens up and does kicks and he will get a little wild in those exchanges, that could be pretty tasty for Jamal Hill. Again, he doesn't move like a boxer where, you know, he's bobbing, weaving in and out. No, he gets hit. And if Jamal Hill hits you, it's, it's trouble. But again, I, I'm just a little cautious to pick Jamal. Can he win? Absolutely. But to bet on it, I would not bet on this fight just because I don't know what version of Jamal Hill we're getting. So I looked it up. It was July of last year. So it's like nine months, not even a year. Trouble. Yeah. Trouble, trouble. Typically, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, uh, you know, he wouldn't take the fight and risk a loss if he didn't think he was 100%. So I assume he's a hundo. But again, that's a huge question. Mm -hmm. Would not bet on it. Would not bet on it. You know? But can he win? Absolutely. Gaethje, Max Holloway, I'm taking Max in that. Charles Oliveira, Armin Sarukin, Charles a big underdog. I just think he's changing the guard, especially at 55. I just think it's Ar Armin's time, you know? So we'll see what happens there. Bo Nichols obviously can do work. There's a reason why he's on there. Yeri Rakic, fantastic fight. I assume Yeri's the, the favorite on that? Uh, underdog. Interesting. 102 versus minus 122 for Rakic. Mm. So by <laughs> if you're a now, betting man, wow. I mean, plus one hundred two, minus one twenty two. That's it's pretty damn close, yeah. Aljo and Calvin, very close too. Plus mm -hmm. one forty, one sixty six. Damn, Kayla in a minus four ten. There's some dogs. Listen, do I think Kayla's gonna win? Probably, but bro, plus three twenty for Holly in that weight cut. I'd put some money on that. Do I think Holly's gonna win? No, she definitely could. Definitely could. Interesting. Jim Miller plus one fifty, Bobby Green minus one eighty. Mm -hmm. Tough to be against 
Jim fucking Miller. <gasps> Cody Garbrandt plus 245. Tough fight for Cody. Mm. Cody's my boy. Very tough fight. Huge step up in competition from his last two fights. Very tough fight. What do you think about the Calvin Cater, Aljamain Sterling one since Aljamain's moving up? Yeah, Aljamain's um, still favored too. Yeah, Al Alja's a beast. You gotta put some respect on his name. Mm -hmm. You almost have forgot. Yeah, and Bo Nichols there just uh, <laughs> it's insane. Minus twenty one hundred. Yeah, he he's just there. It's, they're just highlighting him so the casuals get familiar with him before he goes on this complete tear of the middleweight division, dominates. That's all they're doing. Plus they could just play the Bo Nickel commercial. They would have done the same thing. Just play a three minute commercial of him beating up everybody and people are like, Oh, he looks cool. <laughs> Waylay's a huge favorite as well. Mm -hmm. that, that that placement's weird. And you have Justin and Matt should probably take up that spot, right? Yes. But they want to get the Chinese fans, I'm sure. Why would I do that in China? Again, scheduling, who knows? Who knows? The trip or the yeah, I don't know. Feel like they could put they that make somewhere it, else. They make it big by making at least a co main event, so China's gonna be more interested, I'm guessing. Yeah, that one's weird. Not mad at it, but it's just weird. Placements weird. Yeah, we're still timing. We're weird. still gonna watch the fight, so it's gonna I'll take it. Yeah. If you're gonna take a piss break, that's probably the time to do it. <laughs> Let's be honest. I can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Is that it, bud? Uh, I think so. You didn't answer who you're most excited for, Casey. I, I think uh, Max and Justin. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to bet on it? I got Gaethje. Uh, do I get the odds? No. What do you want to bet? Lunch? Yeah. All right. But no boneless tenders. I'm getting boneless. You can't. You can't. Before we went on air, they were telling uh, we we're talking about boneless and uh, bone-in chicken wings. We kind of have an issue in the studio Three because mm -hmm. we're at a stalemate. We're doing like the Spider-Man meme. Yeah, a little bit of <laughs> stalemate because Casey loves boneless chicken tenders. I said the the electric cars of chicken wings because they're easy. Everybody likes them. <laughs> and you made the point that they don't make a sound. They don't like, make a sound. When you do the bone-in wings, the chin's over there <laughs> sucking <laughs> out the cartilage and all this. Yes, but I, I said also boneless chicken wings are just basically a chicken nugget. Which is fine. I'm not, I, I accept it's a chicken nugget. So call I it, love chicken nuggets. So call it chicken nugget, right? And then guess, Chin, yeah. me and Chin were like, yeah, we like bone, bone in. in. I said the flavor's better. It's just the way it should be done, right? You got to do a little work, just like, you know. And then Chin's like, yeah, I love to eat the cartilage and suck the bone marrow out. And I went, oh, <laughs> okay, we're not the Respect same. the wings, dude. We're not the eat same. Eat all of it. No, no, just order more wings, right? No, I don't want to sucks. It. I thing. love the textures. Yeah, you love sucking that thing dry, Daddy. Ugh. Why is it gross when you say, I love the textures? Ugh, it's is gross. It? It's gross. Yeah, it is. I can just hear the, the little yeah. crunchy of the cartilage. I love Disgusting. it. Disgusting. <laughs> I fucking hate it. <laughs> Is that it, Chin? Yeah, just want to show you this pic quick picture. This is Damon Jackson who fought over the weekend. He won. Uh, dude, a lot of UFC fighters are getting their hairs <laughs> going to Turkey, done, baby. It looks amazing, right? Look we got to show Callan this. Make sure you bring us okay, on the right. kid. Because <laughs> on the left, Brian Callan's hair. On the right, that could be incredible. Him. Yeah. I went, did he go to Turkey? I don't know where he went, but he definitely got <laughs> hair surgery. He looks fantastic. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. It sucks, man. Oh, dude. He looks fantastic. <laughs> I just wonder, like, all the grappling and, like, wrestling, does it fuck with the plugs and all that? That's what happened to, uh, so, uh, I forgot the name of the UFC fighter, but he said that, yeah, once he, he would grapple, he did the surgery, and it was good, but after all the grappling, it came off. Like, the, the follicles started coming yeah, off. You might not want to, you get, do it Donald Cerrone style. Wait till, Wait till you're done, yeah. Yeah. He looks fantastic. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> he went from a four to a fucking solid eight. <laughs> Damn, a four? <laughs> do the four before. That forehead's awful. That Brian yeah. Callum forehead? You don't want that. And I think that's pretty much it. Is that it? Shout out yeah. to Damon Jackson, dude. Keep do, keep on keeping on, dude. But wear a helmet or something when you grapple, man. We don't see that <laughs> that freaking hairpiece go to waste, my man. Don't waste your time. But UFC 300 is here, kids. I cannot wait. Don't be a casual. If you're a fan, you got to start watching from freaking Figueredo, Cody Garbrandt, which probably starts at 3 p.m. And there's no pee break. To the co-main event. There's no pee break. There's no popcorn. There's no calling your mom. You got to watch from 3 p.m. to 10 o'clock at night. 
And if you got a UFC ticket, your ass better be in the seat by 2.55 sharp. Otherwise, you don't deserve a ticket. This card is the most stacked card that's ever been created. Is it the best main card? No. Best card? Yes, overall. Big difference. Enjoy UFC 300. I cannot wait. We might do a fight campaign for it. I'm not sure. We're figuring it out, to be completely honest with you. All right? But enjoy the fights. It's finally here, kids. UFC 300 is going down this Saturday. I cannot wait. Large cheese pizza, extra sauce so it's fresh, and a couple of friends. If I do fight campaign, if not, I'm watching it by myself because my family will be out of town. But nonetheless, I'm excited for UFC 300. Enjoy the fight, kids. Love you guys. That's it. Love you. Bye.